Okay, writers, I'm super curious if you can relate to this statement. One of our biggest problems as writers is that we often spend forever drafting only to get feedback from beta readers or agents that the stories we've worked so hard on are confusing or not strong enough, which then equals tons of revising time or completely rewriting everything from scratch again and again. Does this sound like your writing process or experience at all? If so, I am really excited to share a tip with you that has helped me develop even stronger drafts and stories overall right from the start, cutting down having to do tons and tons of revising after. What you'll see in this video was originally a collaboration between me and my friend Caitlin Duncan, who is also a published author and author tuber here on YouTube, that we did after going to a super helpful writing workshop together that taught us this tip. In these quick highlights from our chat, we'll share what helpful tip we learned and the exact process you can use to replicate it yourself, how this tip has personally helped us in our writing process so far, and at the end you'll see us apply this tip directly to a real life example. Typically you'd use this tip before you start drafting, but if you're struggling with your current draft, say you're in the midst of NaNoWriMo right now, you could also take a break from drafting and use this tip to make your story even better so you can get back to that draft and make it the best it can be. Or you can even use it after drafting to help you revise your story too. Ready to learn the secret? Here we go. January of this year, we went to an event where we got to experience a workshop with Tara Sullivan. And she is a wonderful, wonderful speaker. She has so much knowledge. And I was so excited because Brittany and I live in the same state. We were able to go to this event together. So Brittany's going to tell you a little bit about what we learned. At this workshop, one of the things that Tara was really talking about was writing a synopsis for your story. Now, if you're like, what does this have to do with writing a first draft or getting a better story, just hang on with me. But basically, just for anybody who doesn't know what a synopsis is, it's usually a one to two page summary of the main storyline of your book. So all the main plot points from beginning to spoilery end. This focuses on your main character's arc, so it doesn't have every single thing that happens in your book, but basically the main storyline. Now a synopsis is typically written after a book is finished so you can use it to help submit to agents so you can eventually get published but what was really fascinating is that while many of us go through this process we write a few drafts we get feedback and then revise those drafts and then we write a synopsis to maybe get published Tara shared how it can actually be even more beneficial to flip it <laughs> and to first write a synopsis. So instead of writing thousands and thousands of words, you're writing a one to two page synopsis of the main stuff in your book. You get feedback on that and revise that, which is a lot quicker and sort of easier to revise because you're only, again, revising two pages. And then you write your first draft or even just your second draft. And she went on to explain how she used to, um, right, Caitlin? She used to like write these books and submit them. And then people would be like, oh, this is wrong and this is not working. And you need to totally like <laughs> rework all of this. And she'd have to rewrite books from scratch over and over again. And this is obviously with her traditionally published avenue, right? With her agents and editors and stuff. But once she started, sort of flipping things and doing the hard work of some of the revision of her overall plot arcs and different things first, it cut down on her revision time and she started off with something so much stronger to begin with. So in short, here's what it looks like in a little bit more detail. The first step is to write your synopsis and you could even just do this with a pitch and that's sort of what we're going to talk about in a little bit, but that would be the first step. So you can do this before you even write a first draft or if you're more of a pantser, we'd also so say that you could pants your first draft and then write a synopsis and use these same methods. But that is your first step. After you uh, write your synopsis, you can share your synopsis or pitch with a writer friend of yours or even just someone that you trust in your life who likes your books or likes your writing. And you can ask for three things that they loved about the synopsis because you do want to get positive feedback when you can, as well as three questions that they had during reading. And we're going to go into the types of questions that you as maybe a reader for a friend and questions that someone may ask you about your book. You would then take those questions, you take that feedback, and then you rewrite your synopsis or your pitch in order to answer those questions, address issues, and add clarity. And what I think what we're going to share a little bit in a second is how some of those questions have actually given us inspiration to entirely new ideas or new directions for the story. And then after that, we've 
gone through a, diff a few rounds, Brittany. Um, I have sent over Mopsis to her maybe twice, um, and I did it with another CP of mine. And you can keep shopping it. So say I gave my synopsis to Brittany, and she asked me my three questions, and I tweaked my synopsis a little bit. You know, I could send it back to her or another CP and see if they additionally have any questions on top of that. And then as you go through the process, your synopsis will get a lot tighter and more succinct. And that's what where you really have all the specifics of your novel before you get started writing it. And then as we were talking, Caitlin was like, it'd be really cool to like give them some examples of what these kinds of questions are. So when we're talking about questions someone may ask, you want to move from more confusing to more compelling questions. So if someone asks you, you know, why is this character doing this. If they can't understand like why a character is doing something, there might be a problem with nailing down motivation or maybe you need to be more specific about your character. And then say for instance they ask what is the significance of this character or why are they doing this? What is why is this event happening? And if they don't understand a character's action, there may not be enough setup uh, in your synopsis already. So you may need to tweak your, your setup in that sense. And then examples, I don't understand X, Y, and Z. Again, you want to be very specific in your synopsis. You really have such a short amount of page space to explain a whole story. And I know a lot of people have problems with that, but this really helps you as a writer get really specific about your story. So when you're ready to write it or you're ready to revise it, you know exactly what you're doing. So some compelling questions. So as you go through this process numerous times and you, you start honing in on your story, if your reader is asking compelling questions like, oh, what happens next? How will this situation turn out? Those are questions that are not really confused. They're not confused confused anymore. They're excited. And that is a really good point to be with your synopsis. Definitely. And again, if you stick with us, we're going to actually apply this to some of your story ideas in a little bit. But after you get some of these kinds of questions and do some revision of your synopsis or pitch, these are sort of the outcomes you can have. If you haven't started drafting after doing this method, you now have a story that's worth writing. You have proven the concept. You have gotten people to lean in and ask those compelling questions and be like, yes, I want you to write this story because it sounds amazing. And I totally get the character and their motivations and, and and just like the flow of what's happening. And so you know that it's a story worth writing and that people are gonna be really interested to read it. Or if you have already started drafting, but you now decide to take a break from the drafting and try to summarize your story in that synopsis form, or again, you can do a pitch. And now you have a revision plan. Now you have an idea of, okay, this slowed down or this wasn't working for this person. And, and now I wanna change this up. And now I've sent it back to them and they really like it. And, and now I think I have an idea of how I wanna take this draft and revise it. So. How has this uh, writing tip helped us specifically? So as I mentioned, I did send my current synopsis to Brittany and some several of my other CPs for feedback and questions. This specific novel, I've been having trouble with um, for some time. It's just, I, I don't feel right about it. I don't feel right about it in my gut. So these amazing writers gave me some awesome things to think about. I tend to be very close with my book. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way so that I know the whole world in my in my mind. And when people are asking questions for me to be more specific, I started to understand that I needed to explain more. And it just really helps with my process about getting the story nailed down before I write it. Because backstory on the story, I had already written it once before. And I sort of felt for Tara when she, I forget how many times she said she had to rewrite that story. It was, it was three or four times. It was a lot. And it was start scratch to finish yeah. yeah so i didn't want to do that again i already wrote this story once i spent a year revising it and then i trashed it so i didn't want to do it again so this process has really opened my eyes to nailing the story down at the beginning and then not having to worry about it after and this is not ultimately to say that you won't have some kind of revisions like oh, yeah you know? absolutely absolutely i'm just talking about you know getting the story yeah. down for a draft and then right having to do revisions after that. Oh, yeah, so I think it's just like this, this launching off point for both of us that we just feel like it's definitely helping us with our current story ideas. Like we already feel ahead. Like we already feel like we're not gonna have as much revision going forward, which is awesome. I actually have one story that I'm working through as I go through Tomi Adeyemi's writing course that she has. And so she's the author of Children of Blood and Bone, if you've heard of it. And she actually encouraged us to take just a pitch of our story 
story before we even start plotting and drafting and to test it out and shop it out with friends as well. So that's what I've been doing even at the pitch level with a few of my friends I think that are even in the comments with me right now that I've asked like, hey, ask me three questions about this pitch and it's helped me so much. I've sent the pitch back to them and they've been like, oh, this is so much stronger and like I'm that much more intrigued and oh, what about this? And it's just really encouraging, gets me even more excited to write the story. And then I'm also using this method as I plan what I'm calling a short story serial. So it's basically like a TV show, but in book format with a bunch of short stories that all follow one storyline. And I'm using it to sort of present to my patrons, like, here's my concept, here's my episode, like ideas. So I'm going to be doing that very soon and uh, getting their feedback for that and asking a lot of the same, like, give me three questions, tell me three things that intrigues you. And it's so helpful to have feedback. In Tara's workshop, we talked about using this method with a synopsis as we've been talking about, right? That's again, telling your story from start to finish in one to two pages. But we wanted to show you how to do this in action today. So to save time, we asked a bunch of you guys on Instagram for brave souls that would share their story ideas with us, just one to two sentences. And then what we're going to do is workshop it. And we, we just want to encourage you guys that you could take this at the pitch level, get some feedback, keep revising it, keep making it stronger, and then use that pitch as the cornerstone for your synopsis and then write a synopsis and then pitch that and then get feedback from that and make that really good. And then you have the great foundation to write a really good story. So hopefully all of that makes sense. But real quick, if you don't know what a pitch is, because that's what we're going to sort of transition in to look at right now, it's basically sharing the concept of your story in one to two sentences. And so for example, one pitch formula might be something like this. When an inciting incident happens, your protagonist must take a certain course of action against an antagonist or antagonistic force to attain a goal. And to just use a fun pop culture example, let's take Stranger Things. When a a boy disappears, his friends must confront an evil force to get him back. Now you guys can see here that this is very vague and if you had no concept of what Stranger Things was, you might be like, okay, like a boy has disappeared, evil, like what kind of evil force? You might ask, get him back from where? Um, what kind of boy is this? Like who are his friends? That those are the type of confusing questions that we're going to touch on in a minute. Exactly. So those would sort of um, give you some fodder to maybe make it stronger. And so it might, um, once you get some feedback back and you then go to revise, you might come up with something more like this. When a young boy disappears, his mother, a police chief, and his three closest friends must confront a human eating monster from a parallel dimension to get him back. And so anybody in the comments didn't know what Stranger Things was and like which pitch draws you in more? It's, it's the one with the specifics, right? It's the one that is really telling more about the story. So we want to take the rest of our time to see how this works in action. If you want to see this exercise put into practice with the real life examples we mentioned from Instagram, we actually critiqued more than 10 pitches in that original live stream. To view those critiques, simply go to this video, which I'll link down below and start watching at the 18 minute mark. We also gave some quick tips about how to receive feedback on your pitches and synopses and how to apply it effectively. If you're already itching to try this out with a full one to two page synopsis, Synopsis, though, Caitlin and I highly suggest checking out Susan Dennard's blog article on how to write a great synopsis, which I'll also link down below as well. No matter which method you try, we'd love to know how it goes for you. So be sure to let us know that in the comments. And don't forget, you can always connect with Caitlin and I on social media or check out our published books through the links in the description too. We hope you found this tip super helpful. And if you want any more tips on writing, revising, publishing, all the things, check out one of these two videos and we'll see you there.